welcome to this, I guess, very special episode of the Light Path podcast, because right about this time, uh, we are exactly one year into this podcast. So I wanted to use this episode as kind of a signing off of sorts, because it is time for me to have a rest from the podcast and to bring it back in 2024 so much bigger and better than we had at our first go around at it. So this episode is one of reflection and retrospection over what this journey of 104 episodes has taught me and a year of bringing you this podcast two episodes a week. We did not skip a beat, hence 104 episodes that we managed to get out there. And it really takes me back to reflect on starting this podcast and and why I did it. I think I'd always intended to start a podcast, um, but it wasn't something that was a priority of mine. I think that there was so much other thing, so many other things that I wanted to do. I wanted to produce. I wanted to get out there. But it was around, um, I guess, August, August last year in 2022, when the question was put to me by my business manager, but also by you know someone that I held very dear to me and really admire. And they kind of, in in their own ways, very separately from each other, these two people don't know each other were kind of giving me that nudge. Now, I know this nudge because I have had this nudge many times before in my life. So I'm very used to paying attention to it now. In the past, when I've had nudges to do certain things and then it starts to reflect to me or back to me from other people and their suggestions, I've been really good at ignoring it and wanting to do things on my time and my timetable. And that always ends in some type of tear, misalignment, Uh, disappointment or drama. And I think the more I go along, yes, with this business, but just generally in life, the more I really do trust the timing of people call it the universe. I'm going to call it my higher self. I kind of think it's one of the same thing because once you are tapping into that soul, higher self energy, you're tapping into the entire universe, the entire cosmos. And so really, I think the more you surrender to divine timing and allow yourself the permission to let go of your own expectations of yourself or your own desires for how you think things should turn out or when they should, you know, come into fruition and all those things. And you just open yourself to the possibility that things are going to unfold when they unfold and you might not know or understand or see the perfect order of it at the time, but the more you trust it instead of resisting it, the more you flow with it instead of trying to force it at times that it's not for you or resist that flow, uh, the easier actually life really is. So for me, this podcast situation happened in a flurry. It happened really quickly. But all of a sudden, I was in a position where this thing was happening. I was going to launch this podcast. And so I needed to start recording episodes and creating content for this podcast. And the intention behind the podcast was pretty simple. It just aligns with the intention of the Light Path Collective as a whole, as a business, in that I just wanted a space in the podcast field that was going to talk about all the things that we're into, spiritual practices, different perspectives, rituals, routines, healing modalities, perceptions, the ways of being, that could perhaps shed a little light upon the path that each and every one of us are walking. And there are a plethora of spiritual podcasts out there or new age podcasts and self-development podcasts for sure. But at the time, I didn't bog down and get overwhelmed by that because I knew that our community, our voice was unique in that it was based very, very authentically and heavily in curiosity and empowerment in that we are a culture that we really highly value the power and the transformative power of curiosity 
because we are looking as individuals and as a collective to empower ourselves with as much knowledge as possible in order to curate the best, most in line and authentic lives possible for ourselves. Because if individually we're able to do that, we're able to go out in the world and really have an impact that is beyond that which we could if we were following, say, someone else's script. So society script, culture script, family script. So first and foremost, I didn't get too bogged down in what this podcast would hold in terms of a place in the podcast world. I never really get attached to outcome. I've been really good at detaching from outcome. So for me, it was a case of just getting it out there. And so I want to teach you or share with you, I should say, a few of the lessons that I learned in that process that have nothing to do with podcasting and everything to do with really expanding into your potential and humanness, to be honest. So it kind of started there. I listened to the nudges. I had known for years that being in inverted commas, and I'm rolling my eyes as I say this, face forward or public was, for want of a better word, kind of part of my path. Um, Any astrologist I've ever spoken to, whenever I speak to Claire, whenever I speak to Laura about my human design, the work that I've done with Alana, it is all, you know, come into fruition that actually this path is about being forward facing, facing in public. So I don't necessarily want that. <laughs> this is not a desire of mine, but the more I resist into it, actually, the more I really enjoy being myself and the more I allow myself to enjoy my experience with other people. So whenever you're feeling a little nudge or you're being pulled in a particular way, go with it, get curious about it. It doesn't have to be your life forever. Podcasting, I can guarantee you, isn't my life forever. Um, But man, oh man, am I shocked because I went into it thinking, We've got a lot of stuff coming out on the Light Path Collective. This is going to be an, another platform where we can talk with you and reach out to you and share our work and our thoughts and bring other experts and really enhance your life. So I was all for it for that reason. I had no idea the profound impact that podcasting was going to then have on my life. So it was a quick scramble in August, September to get some content, to get some episodes in the bank. Now, (laughs) heaps of people now come to me and say, oh, how do you start a podcast? Because if you've done something before, then people that haven't walked that road tend to look out to you. And my complete and honest response is, I don't know, you just do it. So I did not Google how to start a podcast. I did not Google how to host a podcast episode. I was a listener of podcasts, but I wasn't a studier of podcasts and their format. That is probably a downfall because my content may be very terrible if you've got a professional ear. But my, the most important aspect to my work is authenticity. So I just went for it. I googled on Amazon, I searched on Amazon, a microphone within my price range. I brought the microphone, I plugged it into my computer and the first podcast that I used to do, I actually just record them in voice memo. So I wasn't even into GarageBand or any kind of synthesizer, none of that. I'm still not into any of that. So I just spoke, I recorded the intro that was channeled in terms of what the Light Path podcast was about. I recorded an outro. I had an amazing business manager who put, who said, oh, here's a great website to find music, put music to that. Um, the photo of my cover art is literally a selfie that I took one day. <laughs> so like when people kind of come to me and ask that, I always kind of giggle and I'm like, oh God, I'm the last person you should ask. But maybe I'm the first person you should ask because there is no way in inverted commas, I don't believe to start anything, whether it's a podcast, a career, whatever. The way to start it is to just start it, to put it out there. Um, I guess the only, the leg up I got or the help I got was I was connected to a podcast 
hosting provider. So um, when you upload a podcast, these companies like host it. So you upload your audio to them and then they push it out to all um, the hosts of podcasts. So Spotify, Apple, Listener, wherever you get your podcast apps. So I didn't know that obviously, but this person said, oh, this person does my podcast. And so I contacted them and made an account with them, signed up with them. And that was simply it. And I think it's one of the qualities um, that I really do actually kind of like about myself in that you just start something and you figure it out as you go. And I think so many people hold themselves back and wait to know exactly how to make it right or make it good enough instead of just going for it, instead of just doing it. You are going to judge yourself so much harshly than other people judge you. So the best thing to do is if you've decided that this is the right thing for you, there's something that you want to do, don't wait till you're an expert. Don't research it too much because you will psych yourself out of the game. I'm sure if I started to research spiritual podcasts, I would never have started one because I would have thought, well, there's no space for me here. It's so crowded and all the things. So I didn't even look. I just went for it and I trusted my intuition and I knew I wanted to release two episodes a week, one solo one where I was just talking with you like this and an episode where I wanted to talk to other people, which brings me on to the second thing that I've learned about life and myself in this podcasting journey over 104 episodes is that people are freaking brilliant. I mean, you can't be in what I do and not really value people. It's kind of a running joke when people say to me things like, oh, would you like to co-host a retreat? And my immediate response is always, oh, I don't like people that much. Like I don't want to spend 24 seven with people. Um, But an hour that, by the way, I'm blaming on my human design because I need a lot of time to rest and recharge. But because when I'm with people, I really want to be with them. And if I feel that I can't be because I'm tired, I'm overwhelmed or overstimulated, then I just feel like, like I feel really drained and I'm just not my best self. So I don't not love people. I adore people a lot, but I adore them in short doses just for self-protection. And so reaching out to people to see if they would like to share their message, their work, their experience on the podcast was such a fun experience. My strategy was I'm going to reach out to people that I admire and I follow their work and people that I have followed their work um, for a really long time. And I was surprised that you actually get more yeses than you do noes. Um, but there is a limit to that, I would say. So when I was doing it for the first time, I wasn't expecting anything. Like I didn't care if I heard back, I heard back. If I didn't, I did it. But more often than not, you'd be surprised. People were more than happy to jump on, give you 40 minutes, an hour of their time just to have that conversation. And every single conversation I've had with someone else on the podcast, so 52 of them, some of them we had double guests, like James Carson did two episodes and... Um, Seth, um, Sebastian Terry, sorry, did two episodes. So some of them we doubled up. Um, Bianca has been on the podcast twice, my friend. But every single person I've had a conversation with, I have learned something from. Now, to me, this is my preferred way of learning. By having conversations, sharing ideas, Somebody sharing what it is they understand or know or how it is they approach the world or what it is that they do. And then me internalizing that, comprehending that for me and applying it where appropriate and where it fit into my experience. And I can say hand on heart for every one of those 52 episodes that I have spoken to other people, I have absolutely learned something. And some of those lessons have been so impactful and have been so life altering and changing for me, at the very least, every single one of them has been inspirational because it's somebody coming on to share with you something that they've experienced or something that they work really hard on and hold dear to their heart. And so it's so inspiring. And I think that is the thing that I have valued most about this whole podcasting journey over the last year that I have just picked up 
so many beautiful connections and lessons and wisdom and value. And I really do sincerely hope that so have you by listening to those episodes. You probably haven't picked up the same things that I have, and I, but I, I put it out there with the intention that it speaks to you in the exact way it was supposed to speak to you in that moment. So when it came to organizing and putting it out there, I do have to admit podcasting is a lot of work. You will listen to a podcast episode that I produce for say 30 minutes, 35 minutes. It takes, I would say, a good three hours on top of each of those episodes. So when I reflect back and think of all the hours that have gone into that, I think, oh, <laughs> that's that's a lot. But what I've learned is to be really savvy with GarageBand. I've learned to put processes and practices in place in terms of the organization of my business to produce these podcasts. It's made me super efficient and so much more confident with technology. Not a skill that I thought I needed, but wow, I'm so happy that I have it. I am definitely a figure it out yourself kind of girl. Um, so if I've got a problem, I will Google it. I will find the answer myself. I won't necessarily just reach out to someone and just ask them because they've done it before. I love to learn by figuring things out for myself. And I think that this keeps me in really good stead because everything that I do, like I really own it. And like I said, it doesn't mean it's perfect at all, but perfection isn't the intention connection, sharing, inspiring, and educating is. So it doesn't have to be perfect to be so amazingly beautiful. Another thing or another aspect of this year that has really surprised me was how much I have loved sharing with you my experiences personally and my thought processes. So if I had sat down in like August last year and thought, okay, we've got to bang out 104 episodes. What are 104 topics that I could talk about? I would have been totally overwhelmed. I did not think about anything to do with how many episodes I would do, to be really honest with you. I didn't strategically plan it like that. Again, authenticity and organic is best. So I just had that goal. I was going to put out two episodes a week. And as I went along, the guests and my topics that I talk about would just organically come to me. There will be things that I was going through, lessons that I was reminded of, um, concepts that I would talk to clients about and think we really need to make a podcast episode about this to talk through what we're talking through here. So my inspiration comes a lot from you guys listening because ultimately, and this is, I think, the biggest, biggest lesson that I have learned from this whole experience is that every single one of us, every single one of us has wisdom to share. Every single one of us have lessons to learn. No one has it all figured out. I really want to stress that one because people look at other people doing things and think, oh, I couldn't do that or they're this kind of person. So that's how they can do it. No, no, no. No one knows what they're doing in life, right? We're all just figuring it out. And if you kind of reflect on my approach to podcasting, that's exactly what I was doing. I was just figuring it out. And ironically, the episodes of the podcast were actually about figuring life out and how I did that or my ups, my downs, my experiences and the knowledge and the shifts and changes that I got as a result of that. I love to hear from you guys again something that I hadn't thought about was going to happen, but hearing feedback and responses to episode from you guys on how the conversations hit you. Oh my gosh, hands down my favorite thing about this podcasting experience, because although I'm here sitting behind a microphone and you're there sitting, I don't, uh, should we say in front of earpieces? I don't really know how to contextualize that, but you know what I mean. Um, as you're listening to this, it doesn't feel on the surface interactive, but through this connection, I feel that I've got a deeper connection with you guys. Um, I feel you guys closer to me because 
we are all in the same boat. Like there's no one better than anyone else. It's just literally sharing of ideas and experiences. And again, that's what I loved about so many of the experts and the passionate people that we've had on to interview that most of them, if they are big or successful, however you want to determine that in their field, they're only that way because they gave it a go and they followed their nudge and they're doing something in this life that lights them up. Simple as that. They are people that are curious and they are actually people that are less daunted by failure and not as attached to success as you might think that they are. They're ultimately here willing to give something a go and to talk publicly about it and in that process learn about themselves and share what they will hold close to their heart and to their perceived purpose at this time. And I think that there's more special than that. And every single person has a story. Every single person has so many passions in their lives that if you tap into them and you follow them, that can bring you so much self-awareness and wisdom, just like the people that we have interviewed here. Um, I wasn't thinking that podcasting would be my thing. I wasn't thinking that I would love it. It was, it felt more of a decision, like a business decision at first, I guess. Yes, surrendering into the guidance that I've had around my path. Uh, for sure, there was an aspect of that, but mostly it was just um, a business decision. Like this is something I'm going to do. This is another avenue in which we can build our community. What I was not expecting was how much I would absolutely love it. So although although I was talking about the hours that do go into it, they don't feel like long hours to me. I love editing days. I actually look forward to sitting there and editing episodes, cutting them up, producing them, um, getting all the social stuff to go with it. Like it's a process, but I absolutely love it. And that's a real key indication to know when you're on purpose with something that even the tedious bits of it are not overwhelmingly annoying and that you can just get on with it. I mean, I won't always be the producer of my podcast. There'll come a time where I maybe not have time for that in my day. And when I first started out, I definitely didn't have time for it in my day. So it's something I did um, outsource for a little while there, but I'm just loving it. And um, again, use that as an indicator to know, okay, so this is kind of where you're at. You're on purpose with this. So I guess this episode is yes to celebrate this time a year ago when I was in LA. It was, oh, was it a full moon or a new moon? Let me remember. Um, It was a full moon. It was the start of October. I was in Los Angeles and I was actually sitting on a rooftop of a hotel. Yes, it was a bar. Um, But I was sitting there and I was looking at this moon kind of hanging out in the sky and the moon's message for October last year was actually all about putting away and silencing all your doubts that you've had about yourself and your path and just moving into an expression of or an experience of love. And it was so funny because that's exactly what I happened to be doing at that time. And that first episode dropped and of course I had like vulnerability hangover and I was a bit like oh gosh like this is a bit embarrassing like who's gonna listen to this not that I really cared to be honest but it was more like who's gonna judge this when they do listen to it but all that quickly melted away when you just get on with the business of being and doing and expressing yourself in a way that feels aligned to you So 104 episodes later, here we are, and I'm just here to announce that I will be taking a break from the podcast for the rest of 2023. There are a few really huge projects that I've been working on for a really long time, 
that I just haven't been able to give my heart, my soul, and most importantly, what is required, which is my time and attention to, um, because the podcast does take up a lot of time. And also, I think I just need to let it simmer for a bit. But I promise you, I will be back. I will be back in 2024. I was about to say 2023. I will be back in 2024. I'm not 100% sure um, in terms of the structure of the podcast, whether it will still be the same. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm open to feedback. What do you guys want? Tell me because like I'm more than happy to take that on. I will obviously sit and also channel and ask my higher self what is the right way to move forward. But just know that I am definitely coming back. So over the next or the last three months of this year, you have a lot of podcasts listened to there. I can't imagine that any of you have listened to 104 episodes. Um, So you have a lot of podcasts to kind of catch up on. But I will be back probably late January, February uh, to do it all again. But this isn't my podcast. This is our podcast. This is our space. So if you have any guests that you think would be really interesting and great to come onto the podcast to share their story or they might be sharing their work, whatever it is, get them to reach out to me. You can apply to be on the podcast via the website. Just go to the podcast page and there's an application form there. People fill that out all the time. And I'm, and it's so awesome to see the amazing things out there in the world that people are doing. So feel free to fill that out yourself or anyone that you know, head them, um, point them in that direction where they can apply to be on the podcast. If you've got any um, topics that you do want me to cover, um, anything that you want me to really dive deep into, send them, send it my way. Drop me a message on um, socials or just send me an email at info at the lightpathcollective.com. And, you know, we can, I definitely, everything's on the table. Everything's for consideration. If you've got any feedback, bring it. Like I said, this is not about me being perfect. I'm going to be honest. So I don't really care about being perfect, but I really care about connection. So if you've got any feedback around that, um, how we could enhance that, I would love, absolutely love to hear it. But for now, I just want to say a huge thank you for stepping into this space with me, allowing me to hold space, I guess, in a little bit of a different way than I do when I'm with you one-on-one or in group settings. Uh, Thank you so much. Oh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for listening. Everyone who has rated the podcast, whether they listen or a written review, which really, really helps. um, Thank you, thank you, thank you. So it is with deep deep humbled gratitude that I sign off. Oh my gosh, I'm a bit upset signing off now. And now I don't want to have a break. And now I want to keep recording now that I'm saying goodbye. Um, But it is with very deep humbled gratitude that I say thank you for joining me in this journey. And I absolutely cannot wait to see you back here in 2023. As always, I am sending you so much love and light as you illuminate the paths that each and every one of you are walking.